Hey guys, we have a new video for you guys today. We have a special guest coming in town, and he's here today. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey man. I'm back. <laughs> How's it going? Feels good to be back, man. Nice to be back. This is sweet. Yeah. Hey, what are you wearing? Oh, do I have one too? Yeah. Alright, hang on, one moment. Alright, how's that? Alright. Hey, that looks much better. Sweet. Official Endeavor Health swag. Check right that. Here. Repeat that. I'll probably edit it to like zoom in. Sorry, this is not for sale. We're a physical therapy clinic. We're not a uh, retail store. So what's <laughs> up, man? Not much. How's it been? I'm good. I'm good. I've been traveling. It's been it's been nice, but it's nice to be back in Atlanta when I can. Yeah. How's um How's the West Coast? It's nice. Weather's really nice. It's always sunny. Air's a little dry, so running, I'm running like 10, 15 minutes in, and then I'm like have cotton mouth. I don't want to die. Oh man. Well, the weather's been nice. Well, actually, just got nice here in Atlanta. It's been pretty cold and chilly over the past couple weeks. Mm -hmm. How's it being back? Feels good. I have to say, I mean, the opportunity that I was able to have to work with a pro athlete one on one and serve as their private PT, it's sweet. It's a mm -hmm. sweet gig. Very, very thankful. Very thankful. And uh, it's been great. It's been really great. But it's nice to be back, and I look forward to coming back end of August. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to having you back, uh, working together. I mean, building our practice and you know, continuing to see our athletes. We have a few. Um, Interesting athletes right now. We've got some NFL athletes right been now. Been busy. Yeah. Um, they've been enjoying the blood flow restriction training. Um, yeah. Been all about it. Uh, they love it. We can actually, some of our clients actually been referred by social media. Nice. They found us through. So if you know us on social media and you like our stuff, like it, share it, follow it, do whatever you like for it, but definitely keep on the lookout for more content. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they found us on Instagram. Uh, one of his teammates was came and saw you, I believe, a couple seasons ago, mm -hmm. and he posted it on Instagram, hashtagged it on as blood flow restriction, and they found us, and he previously had um, different practices, went to different rehab facilities, and no one had it. So he came and found us, and we saw some great results with them. How's it feel being a BFR certified, like, fresh? It's new. awesome. I mean, it's, nice, it's right? fun. It's, it's fun, right? It's fun to see the, all the athletes love it. It's fun to see all the athletes um, looking forward to using it. And not just athletes, just clients that just came out of ACL surgery, you know, post-op, knee surgeries, or even just a regular clientele that are wanting to get back to being active. Why do you think athletes, or at least pro athletes, really like BFR so much? Blood flow restriction. Yeah. I think they actually like the blood flow restriction because it gives them a muscle pump. If mm -hmm. they feel the burn without having to do too much, not having no load too much of the heavy weight. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, some of them state that they haven't felt that burn in such a long time. Yeah. And because of the surgery, they're very careful. They haven't been able to push their body to the limit in a safe manner. And that's the one thing. This is my public PSA to everyone out there watching this. If you're in rehab, physical rehab, for either post-injury or mainly post-surgical, and your PT that you're working with is not pushing you enough, you, the consumer, you, the client, have the right to be able to say, hey, I want to be pushed, I want th to get better, and if they tell you they can't, it better be for a good damn reason, because if not, you're really missing out. you got to put in your gains and all the hard work early, yep. so that moving out, pushing out from that early stage, you're going to be in a much better shape. Now, I'm not out here saying if you can't, if you're not allowed to weight bear, suddenly weight bear on your leg, you suddenly start jumping on a trampoline, things like that. No, 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 no. We're talking about safe protocols, mm -hmm. but pushing aggressively to that boundary. Yeah, I mean the client right now that actually just found us on Instagram, he had ACL surgery and, uh, last year sometime, a few months ago, and he was going to um, one of the PT practices here, but he was complaining about how his PT was sitting in the corner, just had him just run through these machine exercises, uh, yeah. and not really get into more of the functional body weight stuff. So therefore, when he came in, he said he wanted, he said he wanted to get his ass kicked. <laughs> Look, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're not out here to disparage any of our PT colleagues. We think they're yeah. great, but ultimately, if you're the consumer or the client out there, if you don't think you're the right fit for your PT, do the best and look out for your health and either have that discussion with your PT first, see what can be changed, um, and if not, then go see someone else. Go see someone that will really push you for your goals. And you know, that thing, that's the one thing that I've learned working with my pro athlete mm -hmm. is that like the mindset's just different. It is. You and know? even though it's the pro athlete that I'm um, dealing, working with right now, he um, plays for NFL, he's actually, 
he's always in tune with his body. So they mm -hmm. know what's going on, they know what's wrong, they know every little detail. And because of that, they're actually looking for every possible way to get better. Mm -hmm. you know, they're using a massage therapist, they're seeing actual sports trainer, they're seeing us for seeing me for the rehab, get them to move better so that we can continue continually to refer in a circle yeah. and work as a team. Yeah. And I think I think that makes sense. Was it the recent article or something about LeBron James spends like <laughs> thousands of dollars on his body? Yeah. And that makes sense. When you're a pro athlete and you're earning money because of the performance of your body, it only makes sense for you yep. to spend that much money, the dedicated time to keep you healthy. Because if you're not healthy, you're not making the cash bucks out on the <laughs> field, on the racetrack, or what have you. And you know, as physical therapists, we do the same thing. We have continuing education courses and we do the same similar stuff. Um, so it makes sense for the pro athletes yep. and for the pro athletes that happen to be watching this right now, we get that and we understand that you are you are the boss of your healthcare, but you are so in tune with your body that we're not really here to tell you mm -hmm. what it is or help yeah. what to do. We're here to just guide you. If you have any questions, ask us and we'll be happy to entertain you those ideas and thoughts and things like that. But yeah. we're not out here trying to tell you what to do. Yeah, and, and also, right. yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're all working as a team. Yeah. Like, that's why each professional team and each athlete has um, a team built around them. Mm -hmm. And everyone's main focus, besides the athlete, is the athlete themselves. Basically, mm -hmm. you know, the medical doctors, the fitness guys, the rehab guys, you know, all, they're all, the nutritionists are all doing different things for the sake of the athlete to perform better. Mm -hmm. So that's I mean, that's that's what our job is. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's been fun, and I think and it's not against those that are not professional athletes. If you're not a professional athlete, but you love health and fitness and all that. I think the mindset's still there, but mm -hmm. the big difference is you're not getting paid yeah. to exercise. And even if, even if you're not a professional athlete, um, you have a team for yourself too. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you can look into nutritionist. Um, you know, recently, I've been having some of our personal trainer, training friends send us over to their clients so that they can move better and mm -hmm. feel better so that we they can could go back to go the back and training. train with them. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah, we would never want to keep you away from the personal trainers. Shout out to all the personal trainers out there. Yeah, you guys know who you guys are. You guys know who you guys are. Um, you guys are keeping this world healthier and a better place. And we're here to just make sure that they don't get hurt again and make sure they stay patched up and healthy. So, um, so yeah, it's just the mindset between the pro athlete, especially when your livelihood depends on the healthiness of mm -hmm. your body. You approach it differently. And it's not that it's better or worse it's yeah. just that like you know as physical therapists we have to understand yeah. you, this is not a game exactly and you got to think about this yeah. way too these athletes yeah they're doing what they enjoy but that this is actually their full-time job mm -hmm. with all of us with our full-time jobs we put all this time in and we dedicate sit down to do better mm -hmm. so even as us as physical therapists just like Brian mentioned we're putting in our time to do CEUs uh, learning about the body taking taking you guys through assessments and really figuring out what we can do to get you better the athletes themselves, you know, they're spending their time on how to perform better, you know. And, and so, like, let's talk about, like, all the office workers out here in Atlanta. Like, you guys are professional sit-downers. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. You guys are rocking it, doing the best thing you, that you could do out there. You're not pro athletes, but you're just going to have to find a time, whether it be once, twice a week, to dedicate to, you know, um, have a better body, have a better mindset, but just really find time to devote to make that healthy. You may not be at the professional level in terms of your performance, mm -hmm. but it's good enough to keep your body strong and healthy for the long run. Yeah. And that's what we're all here about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, And that's something I, I encourage a lot of my clients that, uh, that have desk jobs. And honestly, I think 90, 95% of the people in this world have desk jobs. Mm -hmm. It's just unfortunate, besides us, you know, we're fortunate to be on our feet, moving Get around. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something I tell all of them is to get up and move. If, you're, if you've been sitting for four hours, six hours for a meeting, or even just two hours, you know, cut that time in half. Get up every hour or so, go use the bathroom, you know, make an excuse, make, you know, have an excuse to step out of that meeting and go walk around, you know, get that blood circulating. Stop this meeting. I need to be healthy right now. I need to dip out. Dr. Kim told me. To. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I'll take the blame for that. <laughs> Dr. Kim told me to step out of this meeting right now. Being way too unhealthy. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna be liable on this video. You're gonna quote this video and be like, he told me to step out of this meeting. Oh man. Yeah. Anyways, um, question for you. Health. Do you think health is just physical? No. And it's and I that was pretty much a setup question. I knew he'd say that. <laughs> well if I yeah, I don't know. But no, definitely not. And that's something I 
actually encouraged a lot of my clients, especially mm -hmm. to have chronic pain. Mm -hmm. uh, when I've worked in the clinic with uh, former spine surgeons, different surgeons, and I've seen a lot of um, in the spine clinic, neck and back pain. I mean, most of the time when people have neck and back pain, they've been dealing for what, 5, 10, long 20, time. 50 years? Long, long time. So with that, I tell them, um, health is not just the physical component of it. You got the mental, you got the emotional, and it's all, it all works together. You can be physically in shape, but if mentally you're not quite there, if you're health-wise you know, health you're not healthy, mm -hmm. that plays a factor into your recovery, your healing, yeah. and it's all, and especially mental aspect, that's something that I sit down with a, lot of, with a lot of my clients with. And I sit down and talk with them about what pain is, how to progress, mm -hmm. what to expect from chronic pain, and honestly sometimes I spent 30 minutes, 45 minutes in an hour session just talking about pain or even just kind of talking with them about tell me what's been going on. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm more of a psychologist <laughs> than a therapist. <laughs> but not legally. We're not yeah. legally psychologists. But I think the big thing is that we bring it to our clients' awareness because mm -hmm. there are instances where when you have an injury and especially for whether it's be a chronic or a nagging one or even a fresh one, we we're responsible in making sure that we could find ways to mitigate the pain and so yes we're not clinical psychologists but at the mm -hmm. same time we bring it to the awareness of what daily stressors could potentially uh, negatively affect yeah. the pain making it worse and then what what ways in your lifestyle can we make it so that your pain could be either lessened yeah or enhance the recovery of yeah. your injury well, itself and speaking about enhancing recovery things we can change something I talk about a lot also is sleeping Oh yeah. yeah, huge. Most huge. people don't huge. get the, I figure six to eight hours or eight to 10 hours, the actual required amount of sleep in order for our bodies to heal and recover. Especially after, when going through an injury and going through training and performance, that sleep time is all is always important. Yeah. I think, I think I made a video about that before in terms of like, you know, like all these videos online, like, oh, do this recovery, this recovery, that. And like, that's all said and good. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And it's a feel good and there's nothing wrong with the feel good. If you feel good, your body will be in a much more relaxed state. Yeah. Yep. But if you're only getting like five, six hours of sleep, yeah. it's not, you're not, you're not moving forward in your progression. Right? Yeah. No, exactly. Or let's talk about even quality of sleep, yep. right? So there's all, we all, we all know about like the common additives, whether it be caffeine, things like that could just, that could disrupt our sleep. Mm -hmm. And you go thinking, oh, I had eight hours of sleep, but you were tossing and turning. Yep. If you happen to have any of those fitness monitors or something, and it tells you that you weren't in the proper sleep patterns for yep. very long. Um, or, yeah. or even the well, position of sleeping. Mm -hmm. you know, especially when um, my clients are talking about chronic neck and back pain, we always talk about proper sleeping positions. You know, There's all good and bad, but one thing, one position I always tell clients not to sleep on is their stomach. Unless you have a treatment table like we do with a hole in your face. <laughs> Then, Maybe. then yeah. that, might, that might not be too bad. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's something we always talk about. Positions, you know, different additives like Ryan was mentioning, so. Yeah, so that's another thing too, I just gotta get it off my chest, because I'm on social media a lot. I see everyone out there, but like these Instagram or YouTube videos that talk about like, oh, if you're in pain, do this technique. It's just a total failure in the, like, to serve you, the client, and the consumer, the general public, because it's just really not fair to you. There's absolutely no way you can address and heal an injury over a 60 second Instagram video. And if you swear by it and do it, props to you, that's great. Maybe your injury wasn't as severe, but if you find yourself still in pain or still injured, or you get a little bit of recovery and it still gets injured again because you're trying to, you know, self-treat or do it yourself through Instagram or things like that, like just stop, like do yourself a favor, go to a clinic where that can assess you, head to toe, really give that interview and close to you and, and kind of figure out everything about it. Cause you're gonna want that third eye. You're gonna want that yeah. kind of ex external observer to be like, you know what, you yeah. might want to consider this, this and this. That's really hard for us to figure that out ourselves. Yeah. You know? I mean, especially even, you know, they always say it's always good to have another eye. Oh, yeah. Basically, Absolutely. even from just our point of view, if I looked at a client, I look at a client different than Ryan does. And mm -hmm. honestly, every therapist does. Everyone mm -hmm. has a different set of eyes, different training. But, you know, that's why it's hard to assess ourselves. Mm -hmm. Totally hard. I mean, and we're here to give you a roadmap. We're here to guide absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you like it, cool. If you don't like it, I mean, that's cool too. Like, we're not out here trying to like snag you down for multiple visits. Like, if it only takes one or two visits, 
cool, awesome, and then you're on your way. And yeah. that's kind of how our philosophy has yeah. been here. And so far, yeah. clients like it. Yeah, and just recently, we had actually a good friend of ours, you know, his wife came in for um, neck and shoulder pain. That just happened kind of acutely. Mm -hmm. And saw her for one visit, came in, and had her, well, I have You've heard, heard good her. things from yeah. her. We have heard good things from her, but she hasn't been back. She's She actually went to a fitness class. She actually started um, going to uh, start working out again and doing things she enjoys, so. Yeah, and if you take it early, that's always the best thing. Yeah. Let's change things up. Uh, did you watch the Masters? I did. Well, what actually, so actually we were in town, we are in Boston for uh, my wife and I's um, three-year wedding anniversary. Nice, congrats. So, I'm gonna add, I'll add, I'll try to add like an applause thing on this <laughs> But um, of course, with the Masters, I recorded their very last day. Okay. Funny story. Sure. Last year, I recorded the Masters, and I was like, okay, so if there's a playoff, I record it one hour past. So I recorded Smart. it. When I got home to watch it, as Sergio was putting for the win, as the ball was rolling to the <laughs> hole, DVR shut off. <laughs> And I was so mad. Because um, you like in suspense, like you knew it was gonna go in, but like you just wanted to see well, it. Well, I, actually, I don't, I don't think you didn't I even know if it went in. I don't think I knew who won. <laughs> so then when I changed the sports center, everything else, it was, you know, they've already shown it. So I, could, I, I never found out who won until I looked online That's and had to do the funny. research. That's too funny. So this time I recorded three hours. There you ahead. go. There you go. But yeah, so I got home Sunday, got to watch uh, Patch Green win. Honestly, I was rooting for Ricky to come back or Speed to yeah. come back and tie it up for a playoff. Ricky was balling out there. Yeah, and I think I think Patrick Reed's a bulldog. Yeah, so cool. yeah, yeah it wasn't really. Anyways, yeah. we'll edit that part out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, congrats, Patrick. Congratulations, man, great win, great win. Welcome to the Masters Club, I guess. I'm not a big yeah. golfer, he is. So, but yeah, I'd like to think I am. But but man, it was. It was a beautiful day on Sunday for golf. What did you think about the dislocated ankle? What was it? What Tony was Finau. Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, if you need any help with that ankle, <laughs> holler. I mean, look, I get it. You were in the spur of the moment. You were, you were, you know, running, walking backwards. But it's uneven surfaces. Have you trained on running on <laughs> uneven surfaces, guy? <laughs> you, you sprained your ankle. I yeah. hope, you, I hope everything goes well. I hope you're recovering no. well. It looks like you were doing fine. Yeah. I mean, I saw you. Props to I you. I saw man. it on social media, and I was so shocked. And I didn't think he'd, uh, he'd be able to play, but he went out and played. Uh, and actually not, uh, followed some of the guys on social media that actually took, care, care, of him. took care of his ankle, did some good stuff with him, and he was actually go out and, and able to um, play good round right after that, which was impressive. The reason why they get paid all the million dollar bucks, to, I mean, you get hurt <laughs> and then you play at a top level like that the next day. Yeah. That's like some next level elite yeah. professional athlete. Now granted, he was probably in a lot of pain or who knows, but that's just one of those things when you have that gunner attitude, you go out there and yeah. hit it. I mean, but he did, I think I watched the interview, like he said he was like, because of the injury, like the mm -hmm. angle, feeling it, he was aware of it and made him more aware of his swing. Do you buy yeah. that? I believe, and I think it would have been different if he would have dislocated his trail leg, which would have been his right foot, Why? compared to his left foot. Why so? So because he's, um, I guess a, he's a right-handed golfer. Yeah, right-handed right? golfer. So it was his left ankle they dislocated. Mm -hmm. When he's actually following through with this golf swing, it actually goes into a natural inversion. So basically, kind of rolls onto the outside. Yes. So it anyways. rolls in the direction where he sprained it, anyway. Exactly. So therefore, they, you know, they probably stabilize it, put some tape on it. Mm -hmm. Make sure it doesn't right. go with further extreme. Yeah. So yeah. with that, I think it actually, he was actually comfortable within that range of motion. That's kind of funny, yeah. Whereas if, it, look at it. whereas if it would have been his right ankle, I think it might, it would have been tough to play. Would that have been tough? Like, I, I, I'm not a golfer, but my, my thinking would be, if you sprain the right ankle, it's injured, it's swollen, painful to weight bear. Mm -hmm. Would it be tough during the backswing portion? Yeah, I think it'd be tough during the backswing portion because I think actually when you're swinging, I mean, you get even weight distribution mm -hmm. and okay. we can go, I mean, complicated than okay. that. But yeah, I think it would have been tough with the backswing. But then on the follow through, because most of the majority of your weight is shifted to your front leg, your lead leg, it won't be as bad. But yeah, I think because it was his left ankle, my guess is that he was able to play that weekend. Shout out to you for completing through. Did you make it all the way through the weekend? Yeah. Nice. Hey man, shout out to you. Um, cool. Uh, what about, if you? did you hear about the Kyrie Irving and his injury? No, tell me about Kyrie Irving. So, what happened with... I'm a big basketball head, but I mean, I think it's a great lesson that surgery is great when necessary. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying he didn't get um, 
surgery unnecessarily. Uh, when you're a pro athlete, like we talked about, you're very aware mm -hmm. of your body. Yep. And, and also, it, kind of disclaimer, well, you always want to do things to get you back onto, um, back to your sport quick as, as quickly as possible. And as safely as possible, yeah. right? So, yeah. and that's something we can talk about with Tiger, you know, him going through more conservative. That's going to probably be a whole other video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it next time. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do dedicate another video just to you, Tiger. Don't worry, we got you. Um, but no, Kyrie Irving, 2015, had a fractured patella. Um, and then what they do, literally, they put screws in, little wires through, and it provides compression. So if your patella fractures and breaks like that, they put wires and screws to keep it together. Mm -hmm. And earlier this year in January, um, started bugging him, and he needed to get the wires out mm. that they took out. But then, um, and my thinking, and it's kind of weird when you read all the reports, but my thinking is when they took out the wires, once you expose yourself under the knife like that, you're going to expose yourself potentially to infection. And the infection is going to be... So how long did he... How many games did he play without the wires? Or was it... I don't think he played at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think he played at all. Um, and write in the comments if we're getting this wrong, but like, I don't think he'd get to play at all because he'd mm -hmm. have to still recover from the surgery itself. But then they found out that the, he had an infection in the screws. Oh, God. And as to where, to where you get the infection, my thought is that you probably got the infection when they were trying to get the screws out. Hmm. And look, surgeons do the best that they can in terms of making sure that things are clean, but you just run that risk. That's just the risk of surgery. Yeah. So make it a lesson to everyone out there if you're taking orthopedic uh, surgery, um, the surgeons do their best to make sure things stay clean and, mm -hmm. and no infection, but things happen. Things, yeah. things can happen. So those are some of the risks that you run with surgery, but obviously the benefits outweigh the risk. And for Kyrie Irving, we hope you uh, get better soon. We wish we were able to see you in the playoffs. That would have been, that would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. So screws are out, so you're just gonna have to wait. Yep. Let the what do you expect? Heal. What do you expect the recovery time to be? They're saying four to five months. It's, I think that's a little long, given that's you only take, take seems... hardware out, but I think it's more the precautions for the infection. Okay. Making sure that the infection doesn't spread from the bone. Mm -hmm. Worse, if it gets into your blood, then, then mm -hmm. you're in big, big trouble. So mm -hmm. for someone, especially for the Celtics franchise, for the long-term health for the franchise, mm -hmm. and for your star player, you don't take any risk. You don't take any risk. Yeah. Well, too bad the Hawks didn't make the playoffs. <laughs> Actually, we're actually, I think all of my friends and I, we're actually rooting for them to just keep losing. So every time Hawks do win, we all get upset. <laughs> Why? Because they're trying to go for the worst record. Oh, oh I see. Trying to get the lottery pick. So who's their lottery pick? Who's their projected pick? No, uh, I don't even know. I haven't even really kept up. But. Put it in the comments below if you know who it is. I, we don't know right now off the top of our head. So um, I'm an Orlando Matt Tragic fan, so it's been oh, a I see long what you did there. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I didn't come up with it. I wish I could, but... It's been tough. It's been tough. For a uh, second, I thought you were talking about a hockey team or something. Nah, nah. We used to have a hockey team. Or uh, Orlando Solar Bears. Shout out to them. You guys remember Solar, the Solar Bears. Bears? I don't think it was NHL though. I think it was like IHL, like minor league. Oh, interesting. It was pretty cool. The polar bear mascot with like sunglasses. Makes sense. In Florida. Very, very intimidating. It's a nice like play on. <laughs> you're in Florida. Yep. You have a polar bear. Polar bear, bear solar bear. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense now. Yeah. Um, how are you doing in your progress to getting back to? Golf course with your dad buddies. How's that going? It's good. So we actually have a round scheduled for Saturday. Nice. Um, and actually, we got the first the first video edited is gonna be uploaded very soon. Yeah. To our social. Uploaded very soon. Yep. And then um, yeah, so I started um, kind of get back into training, trying to start uh, working on my endurance, on my stamina, because over a span of three days, we'll be playing five rounds. Um, are you, yeah. It's our normal lot. men's golf trip it's with our buddies, we actually usually play seven rounds in four days. But it's for um, two of my best friends' dad. He's turning 70, so oh. we're going out there. So we're playing Congrats. Uh, five rounds in three days. So nice. we're very excited. So you're trying so, to shoot to, to win the, the weekend? To win? What's your goal? Like my to goal win or is, to make it? No, my goal is <laughs> not to be last place. <laughs> And That's a good goal. inside, a good goal. I think as long as I beat uh, my friend's dad the whole weekend or majority <laughs> of the weekend, I'll be happy. I just want—I just want to be—I don't want to be last. Are you on track to do that right now? Uh, what do you think? We're past. Well, I played a couple weekends ago. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't too bad, you know. I put a couple good holes together, you know. Good drive, good, good iron shot. Um, putting could be a little better, but you know, I saw a lot of 
I was putting a lot for birdie, so which was good. Hey, yeah. there you go. So your short game's pretty much on point. Get well, everything's getting there, so <laughs> gotta gotta keep working. Workout music. What are you working out to right now? What's in your headphones? I'm working out. Man, so when I'm swimming, I actually just bought these um, yeah waterproof yeah, yeah, yeah. earphones, and I've been searching everywhere for. Um, did they fall out? How did they not fall out? No, it, it's that waterproof buds that it kind of wrap around it goes in but you should put a plug up for the headphones like right now like, uh, what, what's the brand alphatronics hx250 alphatronics holler at us uh my you sponsor y'all yeah my or buddy you sponsor us <laughs> <laughs> my buddy told me about that he's a big swimmer I swam for four actually oh uh, david Rob go. david robinson there you go thanks for the feedback but so the, i thought they'd be bluetooth so i was just gonna stream spotify oh, or pandora okay. but once so i put it on the streaming was good the very first i got it but once i got underwater it cut off Wait, so if it's not Bluetooth, so basically what it has, it? it actually has eight gigs, of, eight gigabytes of storage. Oh, so you store the music in there. Yeah, got it. Okay. So, so then you therefore, I was, I'm, a, I'm actually able to swim, and not have having to worry about my phone or Pandora or That's Spotify. Nice. So is it linked together or it's individual pods? It's just, well, it's just a pod that goes around and they kind of link together. Oh, so, so they do link in the back. Yeah, okay. kind of like the Beats headphones, I guess. Got it. But got it. um. Music right now, it's just a hodgepodge. I mean, I have like... Come on, there's at least one track on repeat. Repeat, man. Uh, well, I have some Christian music on there. Okay, Just cool. kind of for meditation, especially nice. early mornings when I'm swimming at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's good. But I have uh, Logic's album, Bobby Tarantino, on there right now. That's very good. It's actually, Bobby Tarantino 2? Yeah, 2. That's a good one. Yeah, so I got that kind of just running the whole time right now. And then when it's not playing, it'll kind of transition into like my meditation and Christian music. There you go. <laughs> it's a good transition. So whether I transition. swim slower, whether I swim fast, or running fast, which I just started running too. Nice. Yeah. So nice. it's been fun. Yeah. You running? I have been running. Uh, it's been helping me a lot, kind of uh, emotionally, mentally, just to kind of stay level. Mm -hmm. I think it's important where like when I don't do any physical activity, I become like a slob, a blob. Yeah. And mentally, it almost comes to get into a fog. It does. And, and honestly, like the... The days when I don't wake up and go swim or work out or run, I actually feel kind of sluggish the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. But when I do go for a run or go for a swim or go work out, I kind of wake up early. It, I'm in a what do you call it, I'm in a more productive mood. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm ready to see clients. I'm ready to go see the next client. I'm ready to you know shoot video. You know mm -hmm. meet mm -hmm. Ryan over here. You know it's just our um. The mental aspect, the mental game is better. Yeah, so if, if let's say you're watching this video and you kind of struggle with those things, maybe consider that, add that in in your week, if, especially if you're not a regular exerciser where you don't exercise on a regular basis, mm -hmm. maybe sprinkle it in once or twice in a week just to see and get started, slow up and ramp up and add that in. Um, even it could be like a recumbent bike, like a stationary mm -hmm. bike for 10, 15 minutes just to even get the blood flow moving. Um, get your heart rate moving. Yep. I mean, it, it could definitely change a few things, and it may not be uh, like the solve everything mm -hmm. piece, but it's definitely a, a part in terms of staying that total health in terms of that mental, mm -hmm. physical. You said emotional. I'd probably say more spiritual, mental, yeah. physical, spiritual, yeah. in terms of the three, um, yeah. whatever you believe in, to kind of really get those all aligned yeah. and give you that purpose and. Um, that's what's been really great practicing mm -hmm. so this practice we have the time to be able to kind of discuss that yeah open that up and we're not out here to be preachy but it's really more like let's discuss this like how's your day what yeah. you, what's your purpose we call it endeavor what is your endeavor yeah, what is your endeavor yeah. to why are you running 50 miles in a week you know yeah. what I mean there's all those reasons so yeah like what are you chasing I mean like with Nike golf you know, they say you know uh, what are you chasing after you know are you chasing after birdies are you chasing after mm -hmm. And there may be even a deeper why behind that. Like, why are you chasing birds? Yeah, exactly. You know, right. for people, it's I need to make my livelihood. For you, and maybe I don't want to get in last place. Yeah, and I want to be able to enjoy. And there's something to be said about as humans to be able to achieve a goal, set a goal, achieve it, and then move on to the next one. We learn a lot about ourselves in terms of the progression. Yes. Moving forward. Right? Yeah, and progression and goals, especially with you know, with a lot of clients and rehab and performance. If you don't give them a goal and you don't set out goals especially in the very beginning they don't really have anything to look forward to mm -hmm. yeah. but that's why if you always talk about small goals and not especially with a lot of chronic pain clients is that you can't really look at the end goal of being 100% now not yet yeah yeah that's know? true there's like that's, smaller steps exactly. to reach 
because if you try and put it out too far, it may not be, it's not realistic, but it'll be tough. You get discouraged. To wrap around to yeah. get to that exactly. next level. Because in our mind, we're always thinking, why aren't we 100% now? Yeah. But if you focus on these small gains and goals where, wow, I was actually able to run two miles today. Um, I, I can actually sit during the whole work day, or I can actually, you know, mm -hmm. um, function throughout the day with no pain. And if you focus on these smaller goals, that'll keep the clients and us motivated to keep working hard, to keep working at it and really working towards our end goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so for me, you know, just to keep myself kind of like mentally like level and, and healthy and all that, I'm just kind of running, right? I'm not really, I haven't picked a race, but just kind of just give myself the goal, can I run every day? Yeah. Well, and there may be goals like that where it is a smaller piece like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe the bigger goal will be decided later. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of toying around with maybe running the half marathon for Thanksgiving here back in Atlanta. Ooh, I might maybe join you on that. that. Check that out. So actually, so actually, I've been swimming and starting to get back into running also because my wife and I, we actually ran, run the Peachy Road Race every year. So Are you running it this year? Yeah, so that's nice. a tradition. Oh, I miss, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss it. Why? I don't think I'm going to be in town. Yeah. yeah, we run every year. Uh, thanks to our friends, Iris and Jesse, that work at Coke. <laughs> they get us... Um, Coke bibs into the Coke, uh, Coke tent, especially when we're done. There you go. Or you can drink the coconut up. water. The I can drink. Yep. But um, are you training for it right now? Training. Well, you're running now. Yeah, I'm running now. But I mean, it, the, honestly, that run is a. It's like a fun run. It's just a fun run because honestly, there's so many people. It's so hot. It's hot. You can't so hot. really run fast. The only I think you can run fast if you're like out in like the elite, yeah. like. What is it? What's it called? The corral. Oh, yeah. Like you're the front front yeah. part. Well, I'll say when I was run when I was running a lot, I actually got corral A, hey, and I actually I was actually able to run fast because I was actually running on the sidewalks. Yeah. yeah. But it's just a fun run that my wife and I run every year because that's where we met and reconnected. There you go. So every year it's been a little different. If you're a new runner or new to the Atlanta Peachtree, I mean I don't want to discourage anyone from trying to PR it. If you can then go for it. But I'd be impressed. I'd, I'd be impressed too. Just understand it's just a very, very hot day. If you don't get the PR, don't beat yourself up. It just may not be the best race to try and yeah. PR. But if you do, props to you. Um you're probably really, really good. Um or a badass when it comes to rank. It's just a hot day. Yeah. Once I realized that I can't really PR or once I didn't like get into competitive racing after a couple of years. Every time we're on the Peachy Road Race now, when when those guys are hanging, um, handing out PBRs or uh, sh those sausages, I'll grab one and then I'll, I'll drink a beer while running. Thank you. Yeah, but, nothing, not a better way to ruin all your months of training by just taking <laughs> one PBR on that course. <laughs> all your months of training oh, down yeah. the road, down the tubes. That's, That's what it's all about. And the Peachy Road Race is about just having fun. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm running right now every day and plan to. Let's see. I think I think a half marathon Thanksgiving would give me plenty of time. Are you doing it? Are you on a specific training program right now? Or are you training program is just get out and run. That's just kind of where I'm at right now. How many miles? Uh, right now, if I could shoot to be minimum three, I'd be happy every day. But I don't beat myself up right now in terms of like if I don't need if I don't get the three miles, mm -hmm. if I just get at least some run in. If it's uh -huh. a shorter run yeah. because of time, I'm just I'll hit it faster. Like I'll yeah. do a faster run. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been really really helpful. So for all the runners out there, Ryan, why don't you tell them a little about um, like the recovery days or like the programming for the half marathons, the full marathons? You know how there's always that one day where it has <laughs> recovery day at zero, zero miles. Zero. I think I know. From past experience, and, I, and I'm not a coach, and there's really great coaches out here, actually, out here in Atlanta, um, that could help you with this. But like, when you have a recovery day, I would say to just do nothing. Exactly. Or at the very least, not running related. Um, mentally, Cross training, yeah. mentally, you could kind of physically go into. No, mentally, you could go into maybe something that gets your mind off running. Yep. Um, maybe either watch a comedy or do just something else other than mm -hmm. running. Um, I think that's often neglected in terms of that mental that mental it aspect. Is. And th those days are actually, and I've been telling all my clients about this too, the runners, is that those honestly are the hardest days. Cause especially as runners. Why so? Because I feel like as runners, we're stubborn, you know, we're, we get addicted, we, we want that, that high or we just feel great. So when they, when they, when it comes to that day with zero miles, they're, they get antsy because they feel like if they don't run, they're actually going to be... They're missing out. They're missing yeah. out. They're kind of left behind. But in reality, if you try and do too much, you will burn yourself yeah. to the ground. And, yeah. and if you check all of the little programs out there, usually the day after the zero mile day, the recovery day, is your long day. Mm -hmm. 
it's usually the long it's like true. it's like the long run of the week yeah so for not only is it to running but you know when you're going to rehab training golf you know those recovery dates are almost just as important as your actual training days yeah I think um, do whatever it takes to feel good whether it be you go out and get your massage or you literally go out into the pool and just kind of hang out mm -hmm. and, and you know relax read a book like maybe find ways to put your mind at peace or at ease whether you meditate or something like that because you can't run too high and, I, and we could get into the science of it all mm -hmm. um, in terms of the hormones and all the stuff cortisol all that but like you just can't run yourself too high and you can't yeah. be too low you got to kind of really keep that level and watch out because as you probably already know your training plan and your program is so fragile like anything could happen yeah and oftentimes you know when we talk when i talk about with runners and we look at their form and all that um the form is almost a manifestation of a training error a bigger training error yeah i right? agree yeah like they take that zero day and i don't know make it like a heavy cycling day at a cycling class which is i think is okay but at the same time like you gotta give your body that rest and yeah. recovery. i mean it's good to cross train don't get me wrong absolutely but you know like, you gotta choose the days you gotta choose what you're doing you gotta choose what type of activity you actually decided but seven days training i mean seven days training and then if you have a full-time job you're doing the full-time job and the seven days training like yeah. maybe there may be some ways and you could talk with your coach as so you could strategize when to maybe put that in leave in the comments below how do you yep. think we're doing do you like this format do you hate it do you like it i'm going to release this as a podcast too um this will be on youtube facebook and all that so yeah. be on the lookout for that um shout out to all those earlier in the year that um left comments in terms of what type of videos you want to see we did we did not forget about you guys yep. We have those in the pipeline. It's been a busy first quarter for us here. Um, if you have any other questions or comments or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Um, holler at us on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, and we're out here listening. This is this is not like some big corporate gig. Like this is just us two managing this social media because we love this stuff. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, one last thing to leave them with. This was good. What do you mean? Like I don't a know question anything. Or... Anything. Gold nugget thoughts. Gold nuggets. What to look out for? I'll start. Yeah, it's me, getting me, hot. Think about it. It's getting hot, so make sure you drink plenty of water. Okay. That's a good um, one. Do the calculations. Google it. Whatever you need to do to find how much water you need, because as it's getting hotter out there, the last thing you want to do is either fall flat on your face because you're dehydrated. Um, so as it's getting hotter, everyone in Atlanta and anyone watching this, make sure you drink plenty of water and be smart about when you exercise. Don't be exercising in the middle of the day unless you have to. Um, yeah, just be on the lookout for that. I had something. Don't worry, I'll cut this and then I'll jump oh, right into your there you go. <laughs> For all you golfers out there, and even just for your clients, you know, your athletes, just um, find a purpose. Uh, be intentional with that purpose. So basically, um, that's, a like very, that. that's a very big thing that my wife and I, I mean, my friends, family, that we're, and Ryan and I were always talking about is, you know, have a purpose in your life, in your training, in, at your workplace, uh, in your performance training. And with that purpose, you know, be intentional about um, seeking that purpose. You know, what are you doing? What are you doing to stay active? What are you doing to stay healthy? What are you doing to stay mentally strong? So, therefore, just be intentional with everything you do. You know, with me, I, with us, I'm very intentional with my clients. I, you know, we're Huge. transparent. You mm -hmm. know, we um, mm -hmm. um, talking with them and actually did a client before I got here. I was talking on the phone with her, and I was telling her how like all my clients have my phone number, and she was like, "Wow, so you actually are available to them outside of their visit?" I'm like, "Yeah, no, it's for real, 24/7. Well, maybe not 24/7, but honestly, like, yeah, I have we're, clients we're always available. Texting me, um, messaging me, calling me, emailing me on the weekends and the evenings." Um, just questions or concerns, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, it's about building the relationship. So we're, we're very intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's what sets us apart really. But yeah. again, we didn't want to make this about us, but yeah, being purposeful in terms of your training, yep. it's one of the things we always look for in our clients is like, what are we doing this for? And that always gives us kind of a, sometimes realignment in terms of what we're all doing. We could all get caught up in doing this, doing that. But honestly, if we could find ways to redirect our passions or our efforts and make it intentional with what we do for rehab so that you can get to your end goal mm -hmm. and because of me and edward's style like we're so aggressive in getting you to end goal as fast but as safe as possible 
understanding your purpose helps us really understand how to get you there. Please. Yeah. And if you have a tough time maybe um, articulating it, we could help you a little bit to figure that out. But yeah. it's, it's always, usually most clients that, that come to us, they have an idea. Yeah. They usually have an idea. Yeah, they know what they want. They know what they're looking for. Because most of the time they've been to other places or they just, they're looking for better, they're looking for better care. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be gone for another few months. So I'll still sorry, be Edward. here. <laughs> Dr. Kim's here, gonna be rocking, uh, holding down the fort here, so make sure you check him out if you have any questions. If you have any questions for me, holler at me, my contact info will be below. More videos to come soon, and maybe just now us separately, but that's okay, don't worry, we're all still here together, working it out, so, so yeah. This is Dr. Ryan Balms. Dr. Edward Kim. Thanks for watching, see you guys.